So it's safe to say that nothing is what it used to be. And I promise you I'm going somewhere with this. So a lot of comments on the, you know, on the on certain installments that I did, you know, you'll see like 20 years ago it used to be good, you know, etc. So the thing is that I 100% I agree with you. And, and what I think is happening, unfortunately, is that men, meaning you probably, you, we're running out of options. And Sorry, what was your name? My name is you, we're running out of options, and, and there's a multitude of reasons why. And the first thing that I'll get into is that what is distorting reality on both ends is social media. Meaning you got your Instagrams, you got your TikToks, you got your YouTubes. And the problem is, is that I'm in Southeast Asia, and I'm pretty keen on picking up on things. Right? It's kind of like what I do. And the westernization, the westernization of the females in Southeast Asia is a real thing. Obviously, predominantly, I'm in Thailand. But now when we get into the Philippines, what you have to understand is that they speak perfect English. In my opinion, okay, once again, I don't necessarily care if I offend anybody because I always keep it real with you. It's a Latina and an Asian in one. Now, contingent on what side or what type of development occurs regarding that mixture, I guess we're going to talk about. But the thing is that what I noticed with the Filipinas, and we'll do it like this. Obviously, you're somebody on the dating apps, right? Which could be beneficial if you want to date, you want to find a wife, etc. And I would say that probably in certain regions of the Philippines, you could probably find what you're looking for. However, once again, I keep it real with you, we're locked and loaded, is obviously when someone says to you initially, I'm here to date to marry, they're already lining you up to say, look, it's either you fall in line and give me what you're supposed to give me or you don't. So now you have to consider that that's a covert hustle. So most of the times what you're going to see out there is that no matter who you are, they understand what the game is. So it's either it's going to be transactional in the long run, etc. And just to get into the impoverished Philippines, it is very, very poor out there. Regardless, I brought you the region of Cebu IT Park. I was in the business district of Manila. So now normally, for my own sanity, what I'm going to do is that I stay in places that are slightly built up regarding infrastructure. Because some is, and, and there's no offense you know, to you, is that I cannot stay in a place where I'm sharing a bathroom with somebody because once again I err on the side of being some type of tactically you know cautionary so now once again if there's people in your shit they could steal you know a multitude of things can happen once again I don't want to get off track but to get back to the women of the Philippines what I noticed and you can't paint everybody with the same brush because anything can work out anywhere if we're talking relationships but if we get back to the westernization of the world via social media, you got to understand something. You go on your phone anywhere in this world, and you might be like, wait a minute. Look at what these girls are getting. They're on the hustle. So what happens is, like it or not, the women are being indoctrinated via what they're seeing regarding education. And the education is a, it's a hand held away from you that if you look at your own screen time, is that you're influenced for about six to seven hours per day. So now, what's also pretty interesting, if you see me vlog, like no one could be on the street, and then all of a sudden it's like a movie set where like, people just start driving, walking, coming up behind me. But once again, let's get back to the story. So the story is why I feel 
that men are running out of options is that the vibe that I got is that these girls want you to marry them out in the Philippines. Also, some of you are like, you know what, it's great that they speak the language. But here's the dilemma. Sometimes when they learn to talk, you really wish that they didn't know how to talk because there's always that little bit of, uh, how can I say this, nagging and being annoying. So you got that aspect of it. So also consider what I noticed is that we could argue the Latinas are more assertive or aggressive than the Asians overall, if I had a maybe stereotype, you know? But the thing is that you, you catch, you catch the vibe of assertiveness from them, which means, now understand, I'm not just making this up. Remember, I'm somewhere in the region. Not everything you see that I do is on camera. Which, because I can't always bring a camera into a conversation, I need permission, etc. when I speak to somebody. But what I'm absorbing, just once again, it's like an, I'm an un undercover agent for you, is these girls were running the table on the dudes that they were with. That means I saw couples in a relationship, happened to be a Filipina, and a guy from the Caucasus Mountains somewhere. So what I'm saying is that why I feel we're running out of options is that, granted, you, like, you got yellow fever and you want to come to Southeast Asia, that's cool. But I always recommend if, and this is, this is across the board anyway, is that there should be no situation in your life where you meet somebody and within three months you're getting married and giving them the keys to the castle. Now, a lot of you are like, well, you could get a prenup. Here's the dilemma with that. And if you're a lawyer, please comment in the section below. They come to the U.S., you get married, they become a citizen. Down the, down the road, you got the prenup. So they get a lawyer and said, did you sign that prenup under duress or stress at that time? And they'll be like, yes. So the problem is now that could be litigated. Now, if you know anything about the United States and politics, one of the issues is going to be they might side with the girl. And then you lost two-thirds of your wealth because you wanted to go so somewhere to save money, etc. So let's get off that rant for a little bit and let's speak about is the Philippines a police state? Now, this is it was interesting to me is that obviously I know there was crime in the Philippines, but everywhere you go, in front of banks, in front of any built-up establishment, there's a guy, a law enforcement official, with a long gun. Now, some of you will be like, well, that's okay. The problem is it's not okay. I mean, I understand that it's necessary. But I'm going to try to give you the hierarchy of policing from what I saw, because if you watch the video I did about my police confrontation, and also there was a pretty great comment that someone left explaining the situation. There's like the real cops that don't really bother you, just so you know. So I just, I don't want to make you super scared. And then there's like the intermediary guy. Like I, I would call him like an auxiliary cop, even though he may have a pistol on. And what they look to do is that they look to squeeze the foreigner. So what they would do, and what this guy also mentioned, is that they'll threaten you with a fine to pay on the spot if not, they're going to threaten you to take your police station. So obviously, what are you going to do? You're going to pay to Greece. So now, keeping that in mind, as we talk about the Philippines, I don't want you to put it to bed right away and be like, well, I'm not going there. Because remember, I was in Cebu. I was in Makati, Manila. There's other places to go. But remember, the construct is going to be the same. And then for some of my, uh, my older subscribers, there's something called like Cash App. Now, I just want you to stay with me on this. You see, this to me is insane that someone would even do this. But obviously, there's guys who, who you would know as simps at any age. You just meet a girl, and she's telling you or asking you aggressively, could you send me money? Whatever story they're going to come up with, could you put money in my cash out? Now, I don't know where we lost our way as men. I mean... Are you that ridiculously horny 
that you're willing to give a girl money that you don't even know it's insane so why would you do that now once again either in america norway southeast asia what are you doing why are you why are you operating like this as a man right so we go back to security we go back to the filipina itself and once again you find the right one you can have a great life but remember the script could always be flipped on you and i'm always here to tell you you know i err on the side of caution now do you really have to get married i don't know do you i mean if you haven't had your eyes open and you see especially if you're a little older i want you to go into your brain right now how many guys you know and it might it might be you that i'm talking to got married got divorced had the kids you're living in your mother's basement now but you can't afford anything so what i say is that and it'll be an unpopular opinion of course because it's what it's supposed to be it's how they lock you in right so now how they lock you in is to say well it's <laughs> you want to be normal you, you want to have your children take care of you when you get older the problem is there's no guarantees in life so consider that what i'm saying so now the Philippines, for me, we're not done yet. Okay, we're not done. We got Angelis I'm going to go to with you. I'm going to go to Davao. It's going to be the next stop. When I get there, I'm not 100% sure. I want to bring you to Bali, Indonesia first, and we're going to do that whole circuit. But what I'm trying to say is that boys will be boys, and girls are going to be girls. The only dilemma is is that any way you slice it these days you can stay in your home country you could come out here because you think it's going to be easier but remember when i say easier look if we can argue that men are like-minded right if i'm out here with the same monger mindset everybody else you see i mean we're not so different you're going to be out here with the same mindset. Now, also, there's levels of competition. There's levels of age group. There's levels of money or things you're willing to do to grab that girl with the balloons and the lashes. So what I'm saying is that getting back to the Philippines, obviously, this monologue's a little all over the place, but I guarantee you it always comes back to centralized points that I make up. So the centralized points are the little bit of the difference and it's actually a big difference, is that the Filipina out there is going to look to lock you in immediately to date, marry, wealth transfer. It may work out. It may not work out. Once again, do your own statistical analysis of two humans getting together and having a relationship. So now the positive side, because once again, I will always front load you with negativity. A lot of people do not like that. And the reason why is because it bothers them the truth. If you watch other channels, and I go back to this, you should. I'm not the guy just gonna go, hey man, look at this rooftop, it's great out here. Look at all the girls. The problem is, is that I misled you. I misled you in a way that it's always party time in Shangri-La wherever you go but what i'm saying is that you might be a young kid and i'm not making fun of you 23 you're wet behind the ears you got star stars in your eyes the thing is that you make your mistake you start letting things go not wearing a condom get one of them knocked up your life has completely changed and the trajectory of your money in your life has completely changed so now Let's talk about some of the good stuff coming out of the Philippines. So now, some of the good things coming out of the Philippines, I thought, and remember, it's about your perspective and what your goal is. If your goal, and, and the, I think the way you can achieve this goal is number one, A, get a professionally made dating profile. Number two, you would have to exist in the country or the region for at least six months to a year. Why do I say that? The reason why I say that is that with all the abundance that could be out there at your fingertips, it, it would alleviate the fact of you making mistakes and pulling the trigger on something too quickly. 
meaning you have an opportunity to date, you get to know them, they get to know you. So I would say if you're, you're dead set on getting into a relationship, and some of the women are exquisite out there if you find the right occupation, and I'm not painting all of them with the same brush, do understand that. But we have to be honest about society and what's going on with the whole dating scene. I did some interviews out there, you're gonna see me do more. So obviously, if you wanna put on weight, and you want to get maybe uh, type 2 diabetes, I would say stay in that region and eat the food because I felt that it was very, very unhealthy and uh, there was issues across the board regarding nutrition. Regarding training, you could maybe find a gym or two that is to your liking, but I think you would have to become a calisthenics person or you're someone who has to become some type of runner because there wasn't too much to really parlay regarding training. I know this is supposed to be the positive part, but you can see there's not much positive, so I go back to the negative. Um, some of the beaches, I have not been yet. I've heard, not, when I say, you, gotta, you see, here's the problem, right? The problem's always gonna be is that when you watch people create content, they want you to click. So they're gonna show you the best and the brightest. Look at the beach, I'm snorkeling with a shark and a dolphin. So, so the thing is that what becomes is that you get enamored with the place in your mind and you have great expectations. So obviously if you're going to do a quick hit and just the intel what that would be provided would be if you're going to go to Triago, you're going to go to Boracay, Apollo on, what that's going to be is you're going to meet tourists that might be beneficial depending on the activities. And you know, with those things in mind, the Philippines could be good. Beautiful scenery, beautiful women. But once again, if you're going out there with the intention that this is, you know, so many girls, or, like there was one kid, I wanted to jump through the screen, I wanted to, you know, handle this guy. Because he was lying to me, I knew he was. He's like, yeah, you know, if you go on my DMs right now, it's just unbelievable, all these girls want me. Listen, there's a couple of, there's a couple of dating apps out here. Why are they hitting you up? Because you're Brad Pitt? No, what it is is that, if, think about it as a businessman. You have the opportunity to seize a, a multi-million dollar contract with another human being. Now, if you're not following me, what that means is that they see you, dummy, from the West or wherever you're from, and you're giving them rhythm, that Jones, you know, your Jones are with them, like, ah, oh, you know what? I got this guy hook, line, and sink. He can take care of me and my family. Just once again, it's the conversation goes back to wealth transfer impoverishment. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it a word today. So now understand, with all these things in mind, what you're getting yourself into. Now I'm showing you one region, which is Thailand. Now Thailand with the girls, you gotta understand something. Some of them want a good time, and they're cool. Some of them want the long run setup that you're probably pushing for, by the way. You're pushing for that. You could be honest with me, you could be honest with yourself. You're somebody who wants to line up a steady girl because you're sick of going to the parlors, you're sick of being in the bars, etc. So the thing is that you're like, you know what? I don't want to hunt anymore, I'm a little older. I'd rather just settle in, put this girl on retainer and that's the end of the story. But now, once again, that, that comes with a whole slew of other problems that when does is, when is the bleeding stop? When does the bleeding stop? So. All these things are problematic. What I'm here to do, I give you the good, bad, and indifferent. And most things in life, as much as you want to listen to me or you do not, I'm setting you up to understand the landscape. If you don't know the landscape of your environment or terrain, it's pretty much guaranteed that you will fall victim or you will be someone's prey. Now, a lot of you are hopeless romantics. And as I turn around, a little bit of a nice scenery here. See, not everything's negative. A, a lot of you don't realize, once again, what you're getting yourselves into. And I see, and I think it's all about tolerance, the way I see it. Hello? It's all about tolerance. Certain men disregard certain things. Like when they talk about red flags, it's like one guy to the next guy is willing to let one thing go and one guy's like, nah, I automatically shut that down. And now another thing, when you go out on these dates 
and I'm glad I brought this up to you. When you go out on these dates with these Filipinos, because they speak the language, which means you can communicate, you should be running through a diagnostic of questions that basically you're trying to out this person. Like, why are they really here with you? Like, what I thought was interesting, I did some reconnaissance. I might have spoke to some local women out there in certain settings. Now, you got to understand something with humility. I've been in the game a long time. So, I'll tell you what we got. I date to marry. Oh, intimacy? Oh, that would be after we're married. So, so like, right off the bat, are you going to buy a car without test driving it? There's no reviews on it. I mean, you might be mentally... Okay, I'm going to whisper that. Maybe they don't find it. This guy's coming dead on up. You can move over. See, the pre-workout's kicking in. Right? So, what I'm trying to say is that the red flags are out there. You should be running through an itemized questionnaire, just like you would do back in your own country. But some of you are so afraid to ask questions that are pertinent to your future. Your financial future, your emotional future is all in jeopardy. Because at the end of the day, there's a physical drive for you to pursue a woman. Some of you have a larger drive than others. I use the word monger, which really translates a little bit to you being hypersexual. So now you're going to pursue these adventures or events. So now when it comes to the Philippines, it needs more research. I believe you can capture certain things from that region. But what I will say, and I will leave you with this, buyer beware, because if the setup is always, think about it like this, pretty simple actually. If the setup is always, I stand to gain from you, but yet you stand to lose everything from me. So you have to look at it as like a business conversation. Would you, would you latch on to a business partner that was in debt? That means they cannot contribute anything to the business. And if the business dissolves or collapses, the investment that you made or the money that you have, two thirds of it or half would go to that business partner that brought nothing to the table. Does that sound like a sweet deal to you? I need you to mill it over a little bit. This is not a hard question. All right, so coffee and juice, a little bit on the Philippines. Check out my other videos in regards, and I promise you, you'll be able to put it all together. We'll talk soon.